Well, thank you for joining us. This is Walking the Talk. My name is Catherine Achenga. Well, this program is all about tracking progress. What is the government doing in terms of pushing its main agenda of development? For any development to happen in this country, then we have to fight corruption. Therefore, the government came up with a strategy, a multi-agency team put together to try and address the problem of corruption if we are to talk about any meaningful development in this country. And in our inaugural program today, we will be talking to one of the key players in the war against corruption, and I'm talking about the director of public Public Prosecution, Nordin Haji, who is now joining us this evening. Thank you very much for joining us. It's good to have you on the program. All right, but before we begin the discussion, let's first hear what Kenyans had to say regarding the war on corruption in this country. Ubisaje ni uisi wa pesa ya Kenya. Kulingana na vile swala la ofisa dinendele ya paka sasa. Serikali tunasema inafanya bidi. Lakini hatuja kuta mtu yoyote, hawa viongozi ambuwa mwosisho na ofisadi, kuna moja ameshikwa, amepelekwa kwa kotini na amefungwa, na pengine kama amepora mari ya selikali, ile mali ya merudisha. Umeiba kama milioni miya saba. Sawa? Uyo mtu wanashikwa, only one week, unasikia amepatewa bond ya five million. Out of five hundred million. Hata naona wana, watu wanashikwa, wanapelekwa jela wanaachiliwa sasa, sasa unashangaa ni ufisadi gani wanamaliza Kenya alioiba anastahili aifungwe anayepambana na ufisadi asiachilie kamba wale ambao walioiba hiyo pesa wawekwe ndani kabisa mtu waone kama fulani Alex aliiba yuko ndani corruption kuhusu vijana kukosa ajira kuangaika huko na huko kutafuta riziki ya kila siku. Hiyo ufisadi inachangia hata vijana wanaingia katika ukora, wanaingia kuiba manake hawana wale wa kuwasaidia. Kina kijana wangu amemaliza university, this is the second year na amefanya degree first class honors na hajapata kazi. Serikali imalize huu ufisadi na iweke Kenya vile ilikuwa mbeleni. Well, those are just some of the views of the Kenyan people. But now let's to talk to the man who is in charge of the prosecutions in this country, public prosecutions in this country, who is joining us today. Thank you once again for joining us. You are our first guest on the program, so we are honored to have you here. Thank you. All right. Thank you it's been about you know, one and a half years since you got into office. Let's just find out from you. Have you achieved what you'd say was on your to-do list so far? In the to war against my, corruption. My, my to-do list is, is very long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, I always say that uh, I, I would rather people evaluate me than, uh, uh, you know, myself ev evaluating my, uh, my, my, my progress. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, I have tried to um, achieve some, which I think were, were critical, yeah. in ensuring that um, um, the ODPP um, is able to uh, discharge its mandate as per the constitution. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ones that you'd call the major achievements that you have done in you know, the one and a half years that you really wanted to begin with? Well, one, uh, of course, is um, to refocus uh, the war on uh, corruption and, and ensure that um, it is taken as seriously as it should, uh, but also to get the desired results that I think Kenya needs. Um, and one is to be able to have enough impact on the ground to deter people from uh, engaging in, in corruption. Mm -hmm. um, but we've done also quite a number of other things, uh, together with uh, my colleagues at the ODPP. Um, we've been able to restructure um, ODPP uh, to make it more responsive to its, um, its, its mandate. Um, We've been able to, I said uh, before, to review the salaries of the prosecutors, make it a little bit, a little bit better. It's not what uh, we desired, but it's something that uh, uh, has given people a bit more motivation. Uh, we have engaged vigorously in capacity building um, and also equipment acquisition. We've managed uh, to get our own, uh, now for example, standalone building <coughs> that is uh, conducive uh, for prosecutors to work in because, you know, they make uh, very important decisions, decisions that have an impact on an individual's uh, liberty and civil liberties. 
Um, so making that decision that you have to go to court is something that deprives an individual and must be made in a very conducive atmosphere and, and by uh, motivated individuals. And there's quite a number of other things that, that we've done, including um, strategizing to um, target high impact cases uh, that will have um, um, a much more ripple effect uh, on 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 um, combating corruption. Mm -hmm. You also, when you came into office, one of the other things that you also talked about was enforcing strict ethics within, you know, the office of, office of the DPP. Yeah. How far have you gone with that? Oh, we've uh, we, we've gone we've gone very far. Um, so since I came to the office, we've established the internal compliance unit, yeah. which is equivalent uh, for people to understand. It's equivalent to the internal affairs unit that uh, that investigates, um, uh, you know, um, um, corruption or issues of integrity within the ODPP. Um, in addition, uh, we have now regular. Um, um, programs on integrity issues. Yes. Uh, we have, of course, enhanced our own um, uh, our own uh, um, internal um, disciplinary mechanisms and tools. Uh, we are establishing an inspectorate unit team that uh, was envisioned under Section 52 of the ODPP Act. Uh, once this comes up and is operational, it will be monitoring. Uh, the quality of services that we provide, uh, and also um, um, any 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 uh, infractions that have occurred within the ODPP for action to be taken. For action to be taken. Obviously, when you came into office, there was a lot of skepticism, especially among you know the Kenyan people, on whether if they went to court, their cases were going to get prosec prosecuted because of what we've always seen: uh, files missing, you know, cases not making to the end because of such incidences or prosecutors being brought here and there. Have you been able to address this particular challenge and build the confidence of Kenyans? I can't think that uh, um, is something that is continuous, um, and you cannot say within a year that somebody can be able to um, stop a culture that has grown over decades in Kenya. But we, we, we are working towards ensuring that um, those challenges are um, um, effectively uh, uh, solved. So for, for, for the strategies perhaps you're employing? Yes, I, I mean, quite a number, and I've told you some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, b before we escalate, uh, what we've done is we've been structured um, ODPP. Now we have regional heads yeah. that over oversight uh, county um, uh, representatives and offices within the 47 counties. Um, in addition, we are working towards um, putting a criminal justice, a criminal um, a case management system uh, that will be able to uh, ensure, uh, in terms of you know, for example, you talked about the files. The filing system yes. uh, are, are more consistent, uh, that you cannot lose them, uh, that you, you also, you're also able to capture the data that, that is required um, and become more responsive um, and also get a better turn, a turnaround in terms of prosecuting cases. Mm -hmm. In addition, we come up with guidelines, quite a number of guidelines, and one of the most important ones that we are about to um, um, operationalize is uh, the guidelines on decision to charge. Yes. Uh, for a long time, um, you know, um, the police have been uh, have been doing prosecution, mm -hmm. but since 2010, uh, that was changed by the constitution, and they were um, uh, slowly phased out. Mm -hmm. Now you have um, um, trained lawyers as prosecutors yes. within the ODPP. We don't have any more police. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, prosecutors, mm -hmm. but there is still a misconception that the decision to charge mm -hmm. rests with uh, the police. With the police. Um, but then now we are coming up with a guideline that is very clear as to whom has uh, the 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 role and the power to make um, that decision to that charge. Decision. So you're talking about more or less the plea bargaining and diversion. Well, th those are other guidelines. Yes. So plea bargaining. And diversion are additional tools that help uh, in prosecution. Mm -hmm. 
not only persecution actually, but also the criminal justice system yeah. uh, as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, there's quite a number, uh, and I, sorry, I keep on repeating this, but you know, as, as ODPP, we, we start from, you know, the, the most ridiculous, and, you know, uh, crime like witchcraft, <laughs> uh, to the very complex crimes, uh, including uh, graft. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and <clears throat> because of that, um, you know, the, the judiciary or the courts are really clogged, yeah. and so are uh, the prosecutors. Mm -hmm. So instead of us being able to concentrate on the very important cases, and you know, all cases are important, but there are those that have that negative impacts, right. yeah, and, and really need the, you really need the expertise and the time to go through them. So these tools of diversion and 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 uh, plea bargaining will help to reduce the time that is spent, yeah. the money that is uh, that is put into 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 all this, mm -hmm. um, and 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 we make both the prosecutors, the judges, and even investigators, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, um, be, be be less burdened uh, by, by crimes that can actually be solved. Uh, outside court or within the system in a much faster and effective way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, there have been some concerns among Kenyans, especially when I talk about you know the system of diversion, uh, in terms of because it will entirely you know more or less lie in the discretion of the prosecutor. So how can we be able to build that confidence that you know this tactic is actually going to help in you know what you're saying in improving the justice system and fast tracking some of these cases? Okay, well, I mean, in relation to diversion, and, and we have the guidelines, you, you, but as much as the prosecutor has the discretion, but he, he still needs to work with the stakeholders, yeah. the investigators, and anybody who's going to assist in, in diverting. So, for example, if it's, it's, if it's an issue to do with uh, drugs, and you want to divert an individual to a rehab, rehab center, um, one, you need, the, you need the rehab center to be cooperating with you. Yeah. Um, two, you will need the investigators and the police to work with you and actually take the person there. Mm -hmm. Three, you will need somebody to be able to monitor the progress so that they can come back and tell you this person is actually within uh, the system and he has actually been rehabilitated. Yeah. Uh, because you have instances where people relapse and you also need to get those reports. So you will have the probation officers, maybe uh, if it's a child, the child services involved. Um, so it is not entirely mm -hmm. something that is completely left uh, to the prosecutors. Okay. A prosecutor will not be able to achieve this if he's not working with, uh, with other individuals. Who will be able to tell him, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, we think, mm -hmm. um, or Madam Prosecutor, we think, uh, that this individual cannot be rehabilitated and you will have to go and prosecute. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit, but in addition, uh, we're trying to make sure that it, it has integrity. There is a layer of oversight even before you do some of this. So you have to consult with your county head. You have to, the county head will have to inform periodically um, to the regional head, who then also reports to the headquarters. Uh, and there will be continuous reviews we're going to also have um, committees that will be made up uh, involving the county governments to make it a success. All right. So there's a, there's a whole line of checks and yes. balances. All right. Let's, in terms of one graft, is this one of the ways that perhaps we can use besides just you know taking people to court? Are there other means that we can use to ensure we also get uh, to get refunded as taxpayers? Of course, uh, we're going to deploy each and every means. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's 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 about ensuring that it has the desired effect and impact. Uh, what, what we don't want is to end up having uh, a situation where people think you can just be diverted or you can enter into a plea bargaining mm -hmm. um, and then things uh, uh, are left as they are. One, 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 thing, one thing you need to, uh, to understand, for example, especially plea bargaining, because when it comes to corruption cases, yeah. uh, unless somebody comes voluntary, uh, and say, you know, I did this. With that, we can see how we did that. But once the investigations are started, we will have to complete the investigations, we will have to charge, we have to take a plea, and after plea, then we can consider 
um, the, the request for plea, plea bargaining. Mm -hmm. And I've said that we have, for, for, for graft, we'll have a bare minimum. A bare minimum. Yeah, and I've said, for example, in governance, I was giving that example, is the one, you know, they will have to serve a, a minimum of seven, seven months. Mm -hmm. Two, they will have to pay three times what was told. Um, <clears throat> and, and it has a particular purpose. And the purpose is to ensure that, uh, you know, you take some responsibility. You don't just expect that you're going to pay and then go back to that office and then engage again yeah, in, in graft. No, no. Those are those who come voluntarily. Those are the bare minimums that you No, no, this, this is for plea bargaining. For plea bargaining, okay. For, for those who come voluntarily, then we can we can discuss and, 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 and see. Uh, because then, you know, we, uh, the, that it means that this year I was not aware mm -hmm. or we didn't have any intelligence to show that uh, you did what, what you did. But you're also doing it voluntarily. So we will have to discuss the terms. Mm -hmm. One of it uh, might be that, okay, fine, we will not take you to court, we will not charge you, but you have to step aside, and in addition, you return the money, not three times, but return what, what you took from Kenyans. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, the issue with the judiciary, uh, are things, you know, are you working together? Because they've always been concerned about, you know, the delay of justice uh, and those kind of things. How have you been able to overcome this particular challenge? Um, okay, I mean, you know, we have uh, um, a forum that's called the NCAJ, mm -hmm. the National Council on Administration of Justice, um, where, where this forum provides uh, for us to be able to engage at policy level with uh, uh, the judiciary and other stakeholders <coughs> within the legal fraternity, um, specifically also within the criminal justice system. Um, and this is where we are trying to find solutions, and this is where we try and raise some of the concerns that we have. And uh, the CJ, who is the chair, has taken upon himself mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, some certain things are done within the judiciary to ensure that um, um, cases uh, dealing with uh, corruption are dealt with expeditiously. Uh, for example, what he's done is added a number of uh, magistrates. We're going to have 15 now, roughly. It's still not sufficient. If, if, we, really, if we really need to uh, be able to do what, what, what Kenyans are doing, uh, what Kenyans expect of us, uh, we need more magistrates. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also affects us. We also need more prosecutors yeah. to be able to, 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 to deal with the number of cases that are coming to us. Um, you know, I've also explained that uh, uh, we are still using very archaic uh, um, ways of recording proceedings in court, for example. Mm -hmm. The magistrate is still writing, uh, while we could be able to use technology uh, to ease so that he's able to um, listen and pay attention uh, uh, and also fast track the process. Uh, because, you know, as you're writing and you're trying to listen, you're trying to look at the demeanor of, of the accused and even the witnesses, uh, your handwriting is probably going to be very poor and the person typing will take time. And it actually happens like that. And this is some of the things that delay. So we're trying to address that. And we're, we're trying to see how within our, our, our means as a country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you try to address that, are Kenyans willing to, you know, testify in some of these cases of, of graft? Are you still finding that a challenge? Well, well, uh, it's, it's always a challenge because most of these cases, um, you, it's it's about conspiracy, people conspiring, uh, and a lot of the time, um, the witnesses uh, are sometimes the same people who are involved in the crime. Uh, and, and I think there has been uh, a lot of concern raised. Why do we have so many accused? Uh, the problem for a long time is if you leave that, then it is very hard for us to prove uh, the offense of conspiracy. Yeah. For you to be able to, to prove that, then you need the whole chain of the people who are involved. Yes. But, but then again, um, if, you, if you try to rely on those individuals to be your witnesses, uh, without you having a, a stick, uh, usually you run into trouble. Uh, and at the end of it, your, your, your case is messed up. Uh, these people actually do not assist you. They become hostile. And at the, at the end, they tend to assist the accused. 
and then the accusation is that the prosecutors did not do their, their work properly or did not have evidence. Mm -hmm. What about the effectiveness of you know, the witness protection program? Because that has always been maybe perhaps part of the reason why... Well, the, 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 first of all, the witness protection agency uh, is, is probably the only one in Africa, uh, apart from maybe South Africa. Um, in the, and, and definitely within the region, Kenya is, is the one leading. Yeah. It's a small agency. We are trying to build capacity for it. It's, yeah. it's a new concept. But we already have witnesses protected under that program. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are trying to expand it. Um, we are also trying to see if we can work with other regional countries mm -hmm. within the region so that we can be able to exchange witnesses and protect them mm -hmm. even outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also working on a whistleblower um, legislation yeah. so that those who are willing uh, to whistleblow, then are also protected yes. uh, within that uh, mechanism of the, the witness protection agency. So that is likely <coughs> to be a game changer once that is goes full blown. Yes. All right. Uh, although we, we do have the witness protection agency, and if we have whistleblowers and they come, yeah. we can still provide that. Mm -hmm. The ODPP itself is also creating within within its within our structure mm -hmm. um, a, a witness facilitation where we, we can protect some of these witnesses that we feel are vulnerable mm. and are important. Very important. All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, we, you are watching Walk in the Talk. It's time for us to take a quick break, but we'll be back shortly with more. So stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Walk in the Talk. And today we are engaging the Director of Public Prosecution, Nordin Haji, just trying to find out what they're doing so far in terms of trying to fight graft if the country is to talk about development. Thank you once again. And uh, let's just look at when you came into office. Uh, we've seen a lot happening in terms of prosecution of what Kenyans would call the big fish. Uh, and with that comes what you'll call the political you know, noise and uh, those feeling that, you know, the weekend arrest, witch hunt and all those kind of things. Have you been able to, you know, keep away from the politics and focus on your case, the substance of your case? Uh, but just being consistent. <laughs> uh, uh, and I think also um, honest and also ensuring that um, <clears throat> we're able to um, build confidence amongst Kenyans that the decisions we make are actually independent and also not malicious. Um, and we've, we've done that in, in different ways. One of the most important ones is to ensure that we explain to Kenyans why we have reached a certain decision. Uh, and I think we've done that through press briefing and, and statements. And this is something that is not, it's not new. All jurisdictions, all modern jurisdictions, um, today do that, whether it is in the United States or uh, the UK uh, or, or other, other, other jurisdictions that we work closely with. Mm. Um, this, I think, has uh, allowed Kenyans to interrogate uh, what, what, what we put out there. Uh, and then again, what we've done is uh, we have, we have uh, changed our strategy of how we approach um, cases in, in, in court. Mm -hmm. uh, we have built a lot of um, um, capacity into, into how, we, how, how we prepare ourselves when we go to court. Uh, and, and, and that is helping to show that um, the cases that we have are actually solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Even as you talk about that, I know you've also been taken to court as the office of the DPP, you know, those feeling that uh, perhaps the cases have been prosecuted in the media, on social media, and you, you're getting, you know, contempt of court. How do you, know, you know, plan to deal with this particular issue? What uh, would you say to that? I have not gotten any con contempt of court. <laughs> but we've, we've seen people, fall, you know, saying people that... People complaining. You, yes, complaining that, you know... You, you, see, you see, I always refer them back to the Constitution. Yes. And the rights to information. And that's what we are doing. We are not discussing uh, uh, the, substance. The, the substance of the case. Yeah. Uh, what we are doing is we are informing Kenyans why we arrived, uh, where, where, where we are. Mm -hmm. um, so those are not valid. But everybody has the right to their own opinion. Uh, and hopefully 
when they're given the opportunity, opportunity to become the DPP, mm -hmm. then they can change their things mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and do it their way. All right. Yeah. In terms of the costs of corruption to development, what are we looking at? How big is this problem? Uh, it's, it's a big problem. Yeah. Uh, of course, we're talking about billions, not in Kenyan shillings, but in, in, in dollars. And uh, increasingly, as we deal with cases, um, it, it, is, it is very clear to all of us, especially the prosecutors and investigators, that, that Kenya is really endowed um, with resources uh, and, and we're, a, we're, a, we're a rich country, uh, but we have allowed certain individuals to, uh, um, to, to squander the opportunity that we have to make Kenya even much better, mm -hmm. uh, but we have also allowed individuals to um, still uh, and, and, and deprive uh, uh, Kenyans of their right. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. How can we change this, you know, the, the, the culture of Kitu Kidogo? I know it's a process, but perhaps what are some of the pointers that no, we should I, I think it, it, it starts with the, the common monainchi. Uh, um, they, they have to say no to Kitu Kidogo. Even if it's going to take a week, two, three weeks, four weeks, um, just persevere. At the end of it, the message will be very clear that this is no longer acceptable. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you have that urge uh, to get that shortcut and 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 and, and get off uh, a problem that you perceive uh, can be solved much faster if if you give uh, Kitu Kido. If you give Kitu Kido. All right. I want us to approach this from you know the, what you were saying that you also engage in partners outside. We have the mutual mutual legal assistance. Yes. Uh, have we been able to see some of the money that was taken out of this country brought back? Yes. Uh, we, you know, um, this it, it's a process, uh, and and it involves also um, investigations. And those investigations must be undertaken both by Kenya and the other country. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. But you know, there's quite a number. There's money that uh, was returned, I think, at some point from the UK. Mm. There's money that um, uh, the Swiss and the uh, Jazzy want to return to Kenya. Uh, there are other monies in other jurisdictions that we are trying to, to see how we can access. Uh, and also, we are trying to um, see if they can help us investigate and actually pinpoint where exactly the money is or assets are uh, and if they're assets uh, do we dispose of them bring the money back or are they assets that Kenya can benefit as a country uh, where, where it is in other countries um, so we are, we are trying to work and it's it's MLA is only going to work if we have good cooperation with other countries and that's why you see Sometimes we have to travel abroad yeah. to reach out, enter into agreements, bilateral agree agreements, enter into MOUs, so that we are able to work together mm -hmm. and create that, uh, that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of numbers, I'm not sure if you have them off the top of your head. How much can you say perhaps we, we have recovered? Well, you, you can't really, uh, uh, it's not easy to pinpoint because some of it ends, ends in treasury. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I can talk about what. Um, I have done since since I've come in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, we, we have enhanced our, our, our ability and capability to, to, to trace. Mm -hmm. We have built a cadre of, of analysts, both at the DCI level and also now uh, within ODPP. Um, <coughs> we are also building on asset recovery authority through the multi-agency uh, task force, uh, where we all sit down and pull together. Um, um, there's quite a bit of money which we, I, I, don't, I don't want to throw a figure, but by the end of the year, hopefully we'll be able to tell Kenyans uh, this is what we have from various sources uh, uh, attributed to corruption. So whether it will be from banks or certain individuals. Now, what, what Kenyans also need to understand, uh, the process starts like this. Uh, you identify the funds, you go and freeze the accounts, or, 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 or uh, you go and freeze the accounts or um, the assets. Mm -hmm. You cannot do anything with it until you finish the case and establish that it was criminally acquired. Mm -hmm. um, so we cannot really say, um, uh, even if you put the figures, that these are necessarily the final figures. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when we identify 
um, but these are the monies that were lost. It still takes time to be able to trace uh, the complete maybe for five or eight billion. If that's what it is, uh, that, that's that's a figure involved. Mm -hmm. um, so we are. Uh, it, it is a continuous process. Sometimes tracing the money will take years, uh, and this is from uh, after engaging with some of the jurisdictions that they take a lot of time, maybe five, six, seven years before you can get all the money. And then you have to do the same process in all the other countries that the money is spread. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, you just don't go and knock and say, mm -hmm. you know, it is a process. Once, once you lodge the request, they also have to go through their court. Yeah, or in fact, I start from investigations, you no know, stress, see how the money came in, prepare give it to the prosecutors. We will then go and make an application uh, in court. That will also take time before then it is returned, mm -hmm. once a ruling has been made. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, Kenyans want re results yesterday. Yes. So how, how are you able, you know, just to make them understand these processes in terms of civic education, so that it, it's not felt like, you know, you're doing nothing? Yeah, well, um, this is why we are having this community outreach programs yeah. under the ODPP, mm -hmm. and we are reaching out to Kenyans, and we are explaining uh, some of these things, uh, but also we are, we are going out listening to them uh, and seeing which areas we need to cover and concentrate on. Uh, um, last week we were in Homer Bay um, and we were taken to a, quite a number of areas and we appreciated that, um, you know, as much as we are concentrating uh, on, on certain areas, the certain areas that the Monoichi down uh, at the grassroots is, is is suffering and there is no attention being paid to it. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are now in, in increasingly uh, ensuring that we are engaged with uh, the grassroots and that we are able to offer our services uh, and discharge our mandates effectively mm -hmm. so that we so that we, we are assured that each and every Kenyan has access to justice. Access to justice. Uh, how do you ensure, you know, what are perhaps are some of the proposals that you are putting forward to try to address, you know, the slow pace in which some of these cases take? Uh, I, you know, again, this takes us back to the judiciary. This is not only the work of, of the prosecutors. In, in fact, you know, we have very little as prosecutors. Mm -hmm. um, it is dictated by the diary of the judiciary. The magistrate will open the diary. The magistrate is handling a lot of other cases, and they will have to check what slot is there for the case to be to be had. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's six years. Sometimes it's even one year down the line. Mm -hmm. um, so we are trying to see how that can be resolved mm -hmm. and how it how how it can be it can be dealt with quickly. And one way is uh, what the chief justice did by establishing. Uh, anti-corruption court. Anti-corruption court. Has it fast tracked? You know this, the you know what you'd say cases against graft. I, I think compared to, uh, to before. Bef before maybe ten years before yes. yes. But is it is it a desired uh, setup? No. We need we need to put more. Yeah. Even as we put more, let's now talk about how do we stop you know graft from happening now. We already have you know the cases that are already in court. Uh, would you say, you know, the continuous sensitization, uh, establishing an anti-corruption court has sort of slowed down the, pay, <laughs> I'd call it slowing down, those who want to engage in graft? Are we beginning to see that change among the Kenyan people? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping so. Uh, 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 I think, you, you know, as I say, eh, I don't think um, it is fair for the person who is doing uh, what, what you expect the results from mm -hmm. to, to evaluate themselves. Uh, it would be best to get Kenyans to tell us. Um, but I think um, it is having uh, a certain impact. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, Kathy, um, I equate graft to drug abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a long time. Uh, we are, as Kenya, we are now maybe in, in a rehab uh, phase. Uh, there's a lot of resistance. You know, when you're taken to rehab, you, 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 you throw up, you react, you become fevers. Mm -hmm. No, you, you actually shake and you want to go back. Mm -hmm. 
Um, sometimes uh, you, somebody ends up relapsing and going back to taking drugs, mm -hmm. um, but your, your, the body itself reacts so violently. Um, and I guess um, this is also what, what is happening in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, it's a, it's a good sign. It means that there's something that we're doing right. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, of course, the other thing is we have to know, and Kenyans must appreciate, this is something that will not end up today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, what we are happy uh, is that we, are, we, are, we have tried to put a, a foundation, mm -hmm. and we are going to build on it, and those who come after us hopefully will be able to build more. Uh, so that then we have a country that uh, is, is, is made up of uh, individuals who are in government and who, who are charged to do public work, mm -hmm. individuals who are of integrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. As you work with you know, other agencies, because like you said, corruption cannot be fought by one person. Uh, what are some of the strategies that perhaps you're employing uh, to work with the other agencies to try and address the problem of corruption? As, as I told you, there is the multi-agency team, MAT. Uh, so here you have almost all um, institutions that uh, uh, have a role in, in, in fighting graft um, coming together, as I said, and pulling together uh, to ensure that they, 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 they work effectively and are able to, um, and are able to um, uh, uh, either do the investigations or prosecute with the requisite evidence mm -hmm. uh, so that nobody at the end will say uh, that um, there isn't sufficient evidence. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the MAT is a very good forum, but increasingly ODPP is also working with the investigators uh, continuously and uh, trying to, to guide and assist uh, to ensure that the, the evidence is, is, is very strong uh, as a team. So both the DCI and the ESCC. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have built teams uh, that look and, uh, and look into cases together that actually conceptualize how the investigation, the prosecution should, uh, should be and how it should end up. Mm -hmm. um, so in increasingly we are we're involving, but also understanding that uh, we are independent. So as much as we, we have these teams, we still have a lawyer that, that sees and look into uh, the work that has been done. Mm -hmm. So we have a team of investigators and, and, and prosecutors who sit down, for example, mm -hmm. and go through uh, cases on stage by stage. Mm -hmm. uh, so the investigation starts uh, after a certain stage. Um, if the DCI feels he needs to consult, the prosecutors then comes and says, this is what we have. Mm -hmm. And then they are told, no, there is this area, this area that we still need to cover. Mm -hmm. There is this and this charge that we think we can add. But can you get this and that uh, evidence? Then once the file is complete, mm -hmm. this this team, team steps aside. Another team sits on the on the file and looks at it independently mm -hmm. to see whether the evidence is there. Before then, we make the decision to charge. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, we have a system that we've put up um, that is working uh, towards ensuring by the time we make the decision to charge. Uh, and it has gone through a very rigorous uh, interrogation. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some of the bottlenecks that you're still facing, you know, working together and still trying to get these cases to the end? Uh, of course, there's issues of funding, but we also understand as a country, we're going through a very uh, hard economic uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've explained uh, everywhere, this is, this is a cycle in every country. Even the US, you have depression, then you have you have the financial crisis, you have the, the bubble burst and all that. So we are probably going through a certain cycle. Uh, we, we cannot demand. Uh, we have to live within our means. And we are really trying to do that. Um, uh, by working with what we have and also thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we, we are trying our best. Uh, and, and as teams, we are working very well. There's the synergy amongst uh, all the agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you know the breaking of what we call the cartels uh, when it comes to prosecution because of the perception that you know the big fish somehow always get away. Well, well, you see, I, I, and this is where we, uh, 
I, I know that there are quite a number of people who are uncomfortable when you talk about bail. Mm -hmm. This is where we've been trying to say uh, bail should be commensurate with the, the offense, especially when it comes to graft cases. Mm -hmm. So if you if you are if you have stolen over maybe ten or fifteen billion, it doesn't make sense that you will end up paying the same bail mm -hmm. as the chicken thief. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. uh, or, or 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 somebody who uh, broke a traffic rule. Mm -hmm. um, what we're saying is um, um, let, let us agree on some formula that will ensure um, those big fishes and those who have means and those who have stolen billions from Kenyans uh, do not uh, get good lawyers and good defense lawyers by using the money that were stolen from Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how we are trying to argue and trying to ask uh, the judiciary to look at it in that way. Mm -hmm. As much as the Constitution guarantees and, and safeguards that right, uh, I think uh, the, it was not the intention that where those rights are abused, um, then those individuals are just left to do it uh, at will. At will, right. Even as we move forward and look at what we've been, ha we've been seeing happening, particularly when uh, some of the people are arrested, the issue about, you know, uh, politics, uh, ethnicity, how are you handling this? I, I, <laughs> um, you know, the issue of ethnicity, it is very sad in Kenya. And we can't, uh, we can't run away from it. Yeah. Even when you look at the charge sheet. Huh? So, for example, if it is uh, KVDA, Kariobari, uh, so you know, you know I went to school in, in, in Central. Kariobari, you went to Kiambu and Nauru. Kariobari. If you look at Kariobari, yeah. uh, the charge sheet, because of where it is, it is situated. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was just for one try. And then that's when they are here, who is he saying you've targeted my try? Mm -hmm. But what does it tell us? Huh? If, if you look at the lake basin that we charge, it is just from one try, mm -hmm. uh, 80 90 percent. But what does it tell you? It tells you about how tribal we Kenyans have become uh, and it is a problem it is a problem when you want to charge it is a problem when you have somebody sitting and listening to the cases because you're, you're worried what if this person is a tribe of some of the accused will he be influenced yes. by his, his tribesmen and kinsmen uh, even the investigators, even the prosecutors. Sometimes we are forced to sit down and say, okay, uh, these guys are from this community, uh, maybe let us not tempt our fellow prosecutors from this community also. We mix it so that who, whoever is there is from... You know, it becomes so... You become... You know... Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. You become... Um, so worried, um, even when you are managing, mm -hmm. that uh, you know you, you you have to always either try and balance or always try and uh, ensure that uh, you, you don't give an opportunity uh, for person for somebody to be accused, mm -hmm. um, or or give people the temptation to try and help um, their fellow um, kinsmen. Yeah. And uh, this is replicated all through, even the counties. Yeah. Uh, and 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 we've be, we've been in discussion with NCIC mm -hmm. uh, to say that I think we need to enforce that rule where thirty percent in in counties should actually be coming from the rest of Kenya. Yeah. And you cannot have a hundred percent. Hundred percent from one. In in yeah. certain in in certain counties like uh, uh, in Homba Bay, we were being told the allegations were. Uh, you have uh, a family that is controlling uh, the finances of the county. 
they are cousins, a brother, brothers, and the wife, the siblings, they are all working there. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. So the, the, we, we have a big problem and we really need to work on ensuring that Kenya is more cohesive. Uh, I think counties need to ensure that they don't promote tribalism and, and clanism mm -hmm. uh, in, in Kenya. In Kenya. And, and I think if there are any amendments that should be done, um, then we, we need to have very strict laws to ensure that Kenya becomes even more cohesive. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of the laws that we have, would you say they are stringent enough to deter you know, people from engaging in acts of graft? Yeah, you know, I always say uh, the law can be very beautiful on paper. It is not the law that matters. Mm -hmm. It is the people and the individuals who are charged in ensuring that the law is 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 affected, mm. um, you can have the most beautiful piece of legislation, but if you don't have the will and the integrity to ensure that it is enforced, it will remain a paper. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you know working with stakeholders, you know the private sector, because private sector still works with government, and that's when we get to. See no, we are we, we are working continuously with the private sector. Yeah. Uh, you know, we worked with KEPSA, uh, they asked us to, to, to participate, there was a conference uh, at the beginning of the, of the year uh, where, where, where we attended uh, on anti-corruption. We are continuously engaging them, we have engaged uh, the religious communities, uh, we have engaged LSK, uh, we are continuously asking people, even like Safaricom, if they can help, uh, the ODPP come up with the, with the um, with technology that will will, will assist in fighting uh, graft. Mm -hmm. uh, so continuously we are, we are doing that. Mm -hmm. We are also engaging development partners and, and countries of goodwill to help us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has there been much progress, especially when it comes to engaging other countries in the war against graft? Yes, there's, there's been quite a bit of progress mm -hmm. um, that helped us in capacity building, some of them uh, even with equipment. Uh, some of them even with uh, uh, technical assistance and, and even um, personnel in helping us uh, to, 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 to be able to fight the uh, draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. So going forward, what perhaps would you say is left in your entry that you'd want to uh, tackle next? Well, uh, we, we are trying to build our own capacity to be able to um, train our, our prosecutors. So my target is um, an, um, from next year, uh, we'll put up a, a, a post prosecution training institute. Um, there's a number of other guidelines. Uh, at the end of the year, we will come up with our own strategic plan uh, for the next five years uh, that, that we shall roll out. Mm -hmm. um, of course, um, we, we have also concentrated on uh, finishing the cases that we have been caught, but also we have been increasingly concentrated on quality prosecutions instead of uh, quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and we engage in a number of other things. Mm -hmm. In a strategic plan, what are you hoping to, you know, capture as you know, some of the things that will change how we do business? Well, well one is, is quality pro prosecutions, as I told you. Yeah. Um, uh, two, to also have a responsive ODPP that actually um, um, works for Kenya. And for, for Kenyans, for the benefit of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. um, also to enhance um, uh, the ability of, of, of the prosecutors within ODPP uh, in, in discharging their mandate. Um, but also, I think, in, in increasingly, we're also going to expand our priorities as a country. Mm -hmm. As much as we are, we are concentrating on, on, on corruption, there are other very uh, important areas like environmental crimes mm -hmm. that we we also going to start concentrating on, mm -hmm. um, and, and and others that uh, we have also started to put more emphasis on, uh, like defilement, um, gender-based violence, um, and, and other important crimes that that are out there. Mm -hmm. In terms of the support that you'd want from the Kenyan people, what is it that perhaps you'd want the Kenyans to do to support this particular you know, fight that involves all of us? Uh, I mean, we, we all, we're always asking for the support. We are happy for the, 
So uh, yeah, we are happy that we have a lot of support from from the public and a lot of goodwill. Um, uh, but we, we are also asking Kenyans to be m even more proactive in fighting craft mm -hmm. uh, at home, uh, in sensitizing the children also, because at the end it is uh, those youngsters that will come up. Uh, we also want uh, the youth to be more involved um, in, in, in fighting craft and to become um, more, more, you know, more vocal in supporting. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also asking other stakeholders uh, to be um, to be constructive in their criticism, to also be fair in their criticism. Uh, the, the criminal justice system is a chain, uh, and you cannot only concentrate on one. Uh, if you concentrate on one and leave the rest, you will never get the desired results. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you cannot say that you're going to fund one over the other. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be equality uh, and there should be um, uh, in equality in in how um, um, you know um, um, <clears throat> um, the attention that that is supposed to be paid in uh, on the criminal justice system it should be as much as possible um, equal uh, and, and and as I said I always say in, in Kiswahili uh, so, so criticize, but let it be uh, uh, constructive. Na pia kukosoa si siyo kupigana, but that uh, um, making constructive criticism should not be uh, equated, or criticism should not be equated to um, destruction, because a, a lot of uh, the criticism that is made out there is actually meant to be dis disruptive and destructive mm -hmm. to the processes and the, and the attempts that we are trying to do to fight graft. Mm -hmm. And have we strengthened, you know, the different institutions to seal these loopholes so that we don't have to keep going back to the question of, you know, people use this or that window to, to perpetuate graft? Well, well we, we, have, we have, but then again it takes you back to even when you ask me about the law. Yeah. It's about individuals. Mm -hmm. You can have a very strong institution, but if you don't put the right person who has integrity, who has the will, uh, who is willing to sacrifice for, for Kenyans, you will never get the desired results. Yeah. Is it a good starting point for us, you know, to begin with the children? Because we've seen now, uh, as now beginning to talk about graft, uh, including it in the curriculum? Yes, I think it's, that is very important. In certain uh, countries like China, yeah. uh, the curriculum, school curriculum, is actually a national security issue. And uh, issues of graft is also, is also an, a national security issue. Um, and it is placed at that level. Mm. Uh, I think it is also high time for us in Kenya to do that. All right, would you, perhaps as we wind up, give an assurance or reassurance to the public that um, going forward, we are likely to continue seeing, you know, what we are seeing, the continued fight against graft and how they can come in to help you in this particular war? Yes, um, uh, <clears throat> that one is without doubt. As long as I'm in the office, I will continue uh, with, with, with this fight. Mm -hmm. um, I think the president has also given a lot of support and I've explained this. Yeah, just because he's giving support does not mean he's interfering. Yeah. Uh, constitutionally, it is expected of him to give that leadership uh, and support. Mm -hmm. And he has really been giving, giving um, ODPP and the other agencies a lot of support because of his desire to see that this, this problem um, is, is, is carved and dealt with. Uh, all they're asking for, for from Kenyans is support and patience. Um, uh, and as, as we go out and reach out to the communities, uh, depending on, on, on the peculiarities of the problems that they have, we shall be able to engage and agree with them how they can help and, and assist us okay. in, in, in this endeavor. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate you finding time just to shed light on some of the things that you're doing to try and fight graft. It is an important war if we are to talk about development in this country. Thank you.
Well, we have been talking to the Director of Public Prosecution, Nordin Haji, just shedding light on the progress so far in the war against graft. And the most important thing to notice, if we win this war, then we will be talking about schools, we'll be talking about better roads, we'll be talking about healthcare. All this is tied in with the services that we get as Kenyans. This is where we put a cap on walking the talk. Thank you for watching. My name is Catherine Machenga. Goodbye.